we're a couple minutes late. We had some technical difficulties, but the Lord is faithful. So we're going to open up in a quick worship song. We're so excited to have you with us. Lord, we just welcome your presence here. We thank you that you're faithful and you're kind. We thank you that you're here right now with us, wherever we are, Lord. We just lean into you. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not fail, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like we sing that again. You are, oh, you are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. And you do not fail, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. And you comfort those in need. And you lift us up on wings like eagles. Well, welcome, River in the Hills Church family. My name is Kyle. I'm the youth and young adults pastor here. I'm so excited to worship with you. I just want to welcome our live stream and welcome our family watching uh, from your living rooms, uh, from your car, if you're going to HEB, wherever you're at. We just want really, our prayer is, is according to Psalm 34 this morning, Psalm 34, 8, where David says, drink deeply of the pleasures of this God. Experience for yourself the joyous mercies he gives to all who turn to hide themselves in him. So that's what you're doing when you've tuned on to this live stream. You've made the choice to turn and hide yourself in the Lord. There's a promise that we can drink deeply of the pleasures of our God, that we can experience each one of us, the twos and threes in our living room, the joyous mercies he gives as we've made this choice to turn aside and hide in him. And so I just want to encourage our live stream family. I want y'all to kind of treat this as a living room. Most of y'all are in a living room. I want you to treat it as a living room and actually comment, interact, uh, talk to your friends even on the, the comment section there, and really just, just treat it as a church service. And we're going to have a short little tutorial video that's going to give you the ins and outs of how to do this if you're unfamiliar with interacting with people on a live stream. We're, so we're about to play that, and just uh, be expectant to at the end of the service, we're going to answer directly prayer requests that any of you guys might have. Uh, Pastor Nate's going to lead us in a time of of answering these prayer requests and just uh, lifting you guys up in real time live. And so we're going to play that short tutorial video now of how we can interact together as a church family over the live stream. Hey, Ruth family, I want to give you a couple tips on ways that you can interact with our live stream today. So. Right here on our video page, we have our reaction buttons. So if there's ever a moment that you're really enjoying something, somebody says something that you love or a funny moment or whatever, feel free to use these buttons uh, in the moment. You can press these buttons as much as you want. That's one way that you can interact. And then over here on the comments page, we have the opportunity for you guys to interact with, with what's happening. So we've got um, a few comments here and we wanna encourage you guys to just jump into the conversation. Um, like let's say I wanted to respond to this comment. I can I can either comment down here and just say something in general, um, like amen, uh, 
uh, and comment that. Or another thing that I could do is also I could go right up here and if there's a specific comment that I want to reply to, all I do is press reply. And then it takes me to a separate thread where I can see right down here it says write a reply. So I can write a reply right here. Uh, and you can add emojis if you'd like um, just by clicking this button right here. Um, and so this is a great way for you guys to interact with each other, not just with us. So interact with each other, have fun community time together. Uh, and then the last thing I want to show you guys is the share button. So if you would like to invite people in to, to see what you're seeing, all you do is press the share button and then you can share it into a group um, by starting a watch party um, right over here. So if there's a group that you're a part of that you want to share it with, or you can share it um, to your story, you can share it as a regular post uh, on your newsfeed, or you could share it as uh, a, a private message to somebody. So I'm going to share now. And uh, there we go. It's been shared to my timeline. So these are just a few ways that you can be interacting with us this Sunday. And uh, we're so excited to have you with us. We love you guys and we can't wait to be back with you in person.
Jesus, we say that we love you. We love to worship you. We love to bless your holy name. <laughs> Thank you that you're here right now. Thank you that you're moving in our midst, God. Thank you that you love to come. God, you love to come. You love to respond to hungry hearts. <laughs> Thank you that you've answered that cry, Lord. That as we invite your presence to rush into wherever we are, God, that you come. That you come. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. So you are matchless. Because you are matchless. the healer of the sick and the broken. You are comfort for every heart that mourns. Our King and Savior forever. For eternity we will sing of all you have done. For eternity
Cause your first coming was only the beginning Just like you were faithful to fulfill the prophecies of old You will be faithful to come again Just like John saw Hallelujah child is born unto us a son is given unto us a child is born unto us a son is is built, and my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare my trust the sweetest friend, but wholly trust in Jesus. the cornerstone weak and strong the Savior's love through the storm He is Lord is Lord of all
church family. It, uh, it was good to see your comments there uh, this morning on the stream. I'm, I'm just going to say that I'm, I'm sure you're blessed to see my face on your screen. So um, I, I'm blessed to see it every morning. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Speaking of humility, uh, Jesus, uh, we celebrate Palm Sunday today, and he, he it, it's just amazing. Somebody actually commented on this, that, that even the way that he rode into town, in the humblest of forms, on a donkey, everything that he did was clothed in humility, and I just, I just pray that blessing of humility over each one of us this morning. That as we, as we live and, and walk through each day, or living to be more like Jesus, that 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 would be a key indicator of where we're at in that walk is is our humility. So I just have a few, um, a few announcements this morning. Um, our uh, home groups, just a quick one. Our home groups are going to be moved to. Uh, Zoom meetings and Google Hangouts. Uh, so if you're involved in a home group or want to be involved in a home group and, and you're and you're not right now, um, then uh, y- you can get in contact with a w- uh, one of the leaders to do that. You can get in contact with Pastor Glenn or email the church, and we'll send you the link. If you are involved in a home group, uh, reach out to your leader to see how that's going to get done and ti- if your times change or anything like that. So uh, live stream schedule for the prayer room this week. Uh, it's It should be on your screen. We got... Uh, Mondays from uh, th- at 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., Tuesdays 10 a.m. to noon, Wednesdays 11 a.m. to noon, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., and 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. This Thursday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., and 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., and Fridays at 3 p.m. These are uh, There's an amazing amount of opportunities to join in, uh, either here in the building with a maximum of 10 people or online. They're all going to be live streamed, so I encourage you to, to join in for those. They're really cool. Um, really cool announcement. Next week is Easter. We're actually going to be doing a drive-in Easter service. Okay, did you hear that? We're doing a drive-in Easter service. So you can leave your house. Governor Abbott actually has encouraged churches to do this uh, for their Easter um, for their Easter morning. So we're going to do it in the back behind the church. Uh, there'll be more information emailed out this week. Uh, the service will start at 1025, but I encourage you to get here early, maybe 1015, so that we can park you, you know, six feet apart uh, from everybody else. And uh, we're going to take communion together as a family. There's going to be stuff to do for the kids. It's going to be a shortened service, so it'll be an hour long, um, so just so that you don't have to sit in your car that long. And for those of you with kids, that uh, makes it a little uh, easier. But they'll be uh, Grace is going to be making up packets uh, to hand out to your kids. But it's going to be awesome. So you can come, invite people to come. We are going to ask that you stay in your cars unless you need to use the restroom. Then the restrooms in the church here will be open. Uh, but it's going to be awesome. So first time, first time that we're doing this, and uh, so we'll see what happens together. And uh, lastly, I'm just going to I'm just going to pray for us as we uh, do our offering this morning. Uh, the ways to give are, are there on your screen. Uh, you can either write a check out to Riff and mail it to 1310 Ranch Road 620, Suite C10 in Lakeway, account, or account. <laughs> you just put it right in my account. No, uh, 78734. Uh, or you can text to 512-580-8899. Just text an amount to that number, and you'll be prompted um, with information on how to complete that transaction. Or you can go to riverinthehills.com and click the Give tab, and you can give online there. I'm just going to pray for us this morning um, as, as you guys uh, take a moment to do that. And thank you for, for sowing back in um, uh, to the Lord's work through River in the Hills. Father, thank you, God, for uh, just, I, I love, Lord God, that, that this was all new to us a few weeks ago. Uh, Father, and you've given divine revelation on just better ways to do things. And I, I thank you, Lord, for um, continuous improvement. 
Father. I thank you, God, for, um, for showing up in ways that we never even thought were possible because we'd never navigated these waters before. And so, Father, right now, even as we, 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 don't, we don't pass plates uh, right now, it's all, it's all virtual giving and, or mail giving. Father, I, you're going to bless it and multiply it. I pray, God, for generous hearts, Father, that are giving uh, just not out of fear, or, uh, um, but, Father, first out of, uh, out of love. Father, I thank you, God, for, for showering your love on each of us during this, this time. God, I thank you for fresh encounters or encounters in, in ways that we'd never encountered you before because we'd never been in this position before. And Father, we trust you, uh, God, and just pray a rich blessing on the rest of this service this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Here, 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 stand up. <laughs> oh, tape. We are a well-oiled machine. Yeah, praise God. Well, um, I when I grew up, uh, before I was even a believer, um, I knew church had donuts. And so one of the things we're missing is donuts. So I'm going to offer everybody a virtual donut. Just reach out, take it. It's calorie-free, the whole thing really stupid. I used to be a youth pastor, so um, that's, that's where that's coming from. Um, I do want to just let you know how much, how encouraged I am that you've uh, tuned in and that you're following along. There's uh, evidence of a hunger in your heart to receive the Word of God by faith, allowing the Word to, to have its effect on the inside of you, a combustion effect releasing faith and strength and hope, because hope is what we are looking for. People try to offer hope in different ways uh, through man's wisdom, but scripture talks about hope being an anchor for our soul that is rooted in confidently expecting the promises of God, that God says, my promises are yes, and we are to say amen to those. We say, so be it in our life, and so um, we're going to have a little different format today. I thought it would be good to hear from our pastors. Uh, person, I've asked them to consider five questions today, uh, and they'll be sharing things, practical things of in answer to these questions. Uh, we won't take too much time on each one, but I thought it would be good for you to glean from their own lives what, they're, what they're, the Lord's been showing them. Um, not as a way of, because like when I hear what they're going to say, part of me is going to go, ooh, I'm, I'm not doing that, <laughs> you know. But the, 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 the Lord doesn't want you to feel condemned. The Lord, where, where it fits, you know, it, the Holy Spirit wants to bring conviction. So, so the Holy Spirit brings conviction. The enemy tries to bring condemnation. And so we want to be stirred. Uh, Revelation 12, 11 says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of our testimony. And so as we hear testimony, I believe there's going to be a release of fresh grace in each of us to, to rise up and overcome. The fifth question, I'm just going to skip ahead before I ask these questions. The fifth question I'm going to answer and then give them the rest of the, the time to share. It's about, do you have any kind of prophetic word at this time to encourage the congregation? Or is there a scripture that would encourage the congregation? And <clears throat> yesterday, this word came in my heart really strongly. I wasn't looking for a word. It just kind of hit me. And it was this phrase that now is the time to draw upon your strategic oil reserve. During this lockdown, this shelter in place, I don't know, are we 20 days in? I don't know but it's a lot of days, that now is the time. A, a, a country, the United States, has what's called a strategic oil reserve. And I looked up the definition. It's, it's the reserve of oil the United States has held back to cope with unexpected events. And so there couldn't be a more unexpected event for the church, for all of us, than this coronavirus. And so... I've been sharing with this church body for over a dozen years now, over 12 years, that we need to buy oil. We need to take time 
to become acquainted with the Holy Spirit, to sit before him, to sit before him and meditate on his word and to worship. And, and it's wisdom to buy oil. Well, now is the time. Jesus instructed the, through a parable to the wise virgins, they took time to buy oil so that they could burn and shine in the darkest hour of human history. And so we are at that place right now, a very dark hour for our nation, but there's time now for us to draw upon our oil reserves, our reality with God, our secret history with God that we've been developing over the years. And now's the time to do that, to become energy independent, to receive the divine energy from the Holy Spirit, independent of what people around us are saying, what people's faces are showing at the grocery store with fear, independent of what the media is saying and this, that, and the other. I want to be energy independent. So three ways, real quickly, the Lord just dropped them in, three ways that we draw upon our oil reserve. Again, the oil is a type for the Holy Spirit. It's that reality of the friendship that you've developed with the Holy Spirit over the years. Three, three ways, they all begin with R. First, remember past times of God blessing you. Remember those. Oh, Lord, you did it back then. You'll do it now. Remember, recognize the present blessings of God. Don't be so consumed with things that you don't go, wow, Lord, that was so neat. I'll explain real briefly on each of these real quickly. Um, then the third is to rehearse out of your mouth and in your mind, the promises of God for future blessings. So remember past blessings, recognize present blessings, and then rehearse the promises of God for future blessings. So so as, as I said, remember times when God touched your body and healed you physically, or he touched your mind and healed you emotionally, or, the, or times when he delivered you from an addiction or an oppression, or an abusive situation. Remember those times when God showed you mercy and gave you financial provision just in time. (laughs) As you remember those, you're drawing upon your strategic oil reserve. Second, recognize little tokens of God's divine affection for you right now. And I know this sound, you may, someone may say, well, that wasn't a very big deal. But for you, it was like, Lord, you knew I wanted just that thing. And just that thing, there was one left on the grocery store shelf. And and that was me a couple, couple, a week and a half ago. I had a craving for tacos. Now, I don't even have a shirt that says I love tacos, but uh, I crave tacos. I'll be real quick, guys. Glory. Last one, (laughs) glory. But I went to the HEB. There were no taco shells. There was nothing. And so I'm, I'm all dejected. And then <laughs> behind some sort of other canned goods was this box of taco shells. And I was like, Jesus, I'm data. your favorite, aren't I? <laughs> so re- re- remember and then recognize the now things where God says, ah, I know you. Third, rehearse. Like you rehearse lines for a play. Go over in your mind things where you the promises of God for the future. For example, Lord, I'm bringing all my tithe into the storehouse. And you promise, you promise you will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. Lord, your promise is no weapon, Isaiah 54, 17, against, formed against me will prosper. No weapon will prosper. And everything that rises against me in judgment, I condemn it. That's a promise. Whatever those promises are that you are we're looking at, you know, think of those, oh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Let these things come out of your mouth. Father, I thank you for this wonderful pastoral leadership. Who, Lord, what qualifies them as leaders is that their hearts are humble and obedient to be followers of you, Jesus. Would you anoint their mouths now? May they release encouragement through transparency and humility in ways that will then 
encourage the body of Christ. And we have hungry hearts, we have submitted hearts to receive you speaking through them. In Jesus' name, amen. First question, whoever would like to answer, how has this crisis worked for good in your life? Or how is it working presently for good in your life? And then two parts, in the, and how has it worked for good in the life of River in the Hills church family? go ahead and I just felt this is me being real transparent I felt the near <coughs> the nearness of the Lord just his tangible manifest presence like I've I've never felt before like every single day a lot of times multiple times a day he just comes so near and I just know that he's looking at me I know that he loves me I know that he's got everything under control I know that there's truly hope for me, <laughs> hope for my family, hope for my church family at the end of this and that this truly will end. And so the word that just kind of encapsulates this question for me is nearness. I felt the Lord's nearness uh, like never before. A second thing I've, I've found is uh, Brooke and I got to reach out to neighbors who we've never met before. <laughs> that was a good thing. We, we had the confidence to pray with them, uh, to meet with them and to offer to help them. And uh, this crisis has brought about those opportunities to meet people that we would have met before and, and really have the boldness and kind of an entryway to pray with them um, in front of them and just agree with heaven's best over them, the neighbors on our street. Um, and then I just, I've seen the Lord work through uh, this software called Zoom, which is like a group hangout thing on the, on the internet. I've just seen his grace, like his super abundant grace go above and beyond um, what usually would would be his grace in meeting face to face. I've seen his grace go beyond that in those Bible studies and, and him just fill me uh, with his words, fill me with his wisdom and him fill, filling the people that are part of the Bible studies, these youth groups that are uh, still meeting faithfully every single week and drawing encouragement from each other and from the word of God. Um, and so, yeah, just to, I felt his nearness personally and I felt his nearness through the means that he's given us to still reach people. And so the, the best part of this whole thing for me is his nearness and just the increased level of intimacy with Jesus that it's, it's life for me. It's what I live for, and he has shown off in this time. And I pray that over each one of you guys, is that the intimacy that we live for, that it would be your reality every single day, that he would draw so near to you, and it would just reorient, reshape your whole thinking, your whole lives. Um, to where that nearness doesn't have to go away after society's opened back up. <laughs> It'll just continue to increase. So I love you guys. Yeah, yeah one thing, too, that I've found, um, this isn't going to necessarily sound like a good thing at first, <laughs> but it is. Uh, it's been really exposing. Um, and But really, it's the mercy of God. Like I think of David in the end of Psalm 139. He takes this whole entire chapter of Scripture to write this poem about how the Lord is like, knows him better than he knows himself, that from before the foundations of the world, that the Lord knew him, before he was formed in his mother wo mother's womb, he knew him, that before David had a, a word on his tongue, the Lord knew it altogether, and so he gets to the end of the chapter, and he says, okay, you who know everything about me even better than I know myself, search me and know me, and show me if there's any wicked way inside of me, and lead me in the way everlasting, and so I have found that these past couple of weeks, that there has been there have been moments where I'm just seeing stuff coming up inside of me that I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was there, and it's not super pretty. <laughs> and so it doesn't sound like a good thing, but really it's the mercy of God because that's David's second half of that, that statement is, and lead me in the way everlasting. See, he knows that the way to life is to forsake and walk away all wicked, uh, from all wickedness and everything inside of our hearts that disagrees with God. And I'm thinking of um, in 2 Corinthians 4, um, Paul says, for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us, some translations say it's working in us, an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. And, and so there's just this beauty of when we go through trials and tribulations, it, it exposes the ugly stuff inside of us so that it gives opportunity for us to work through it so that it can translate into an eternal weight of glory in the age to come. Um, just real quick, what's so cool is... Um, what the Lord's really been doing in my life goes right along with that. I, um, it's been such an increase, a quickness to repentance wow. in my life, and the quickness to run to the feet of Jesus to reveal real gaps 
of the way I responded to trials, the way I responded to tension, and the way I responded to conviction. I, um, a couple days ago, I was spending time with Jesus, and I heard Proverbs 28, 13, and I was like, it's the worst, but it's so good. <laughs> it says, whoever, in cons- 14, too, as well, but whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Blessed is the one who fears the Lord always, but whoever hardens his heart will fall into calamity. So it did two things. It just, it summed up everything of what I feel like a real key of what the Lord is doing in our lives as believers. If we allow him to, we have a choice. But also it's been increasing urgency in my own life to pray for those who don't know the Lord, who don't have a full picture of him, who who don't know that concealing their transgressions will cause them to fall in calamity, who don't know that the ones who, if they don't fear him, if they don't come before him in awe and reverence, their heart will will fail, will fall in trials and and testing. So just believing that there's just divine responses to when he encounters them in in our own lives. Good. (coughs) It's almost like... um, Part two is happening, too. There are two parts there. The second question, what is this revealed in your life that you want to improve upon? So as you guys are are sharing, (coughs) that's what you're sharing as well. Um, Specifically back on one, anything with the church family that that you're seeing? Did you already share that a little bit on the Zoom? Yeah, just specifically, we've, we've had four live prayer and worship sets with the Lake Travis prayer room up until this crisis. <laughs> yeah. And last week we had 11. So we had 11 hours, more than double, almost three times as much live prayer and worship from this room for our region, for our city, for our families, for us individually. And so again, God's grace and even the, the practical application of, of using the tool of, of worship and prayer to, to just come against a, a crisis and agree with God's heart. We've just seen We've been blown away with the responses from worship leaders that have had more margins in their schedule to actually come in this prayer room and minister to the Lord and believe him that he can greatly flatten the curve in our region. So mm-hmm. that's been super encouraging. Um, yeah. And that's increasing this week as, again. Too. And this week, yeah, we're going to have the same number, 11 hours of live worship and prayer uh, here from this room. First of all, to touch the Lord's heart, and then when he gives us a a little bubble of faith, we pray and agree with his heart for our region. And I think one other practical thing is that I'm I'm seeing, I'm experiencing it personally, and I'm witnessing that there's a a real fight for connection amongst our church family. What I'm seeing is that there's a cultivation, well, it's, we're seeing the fruit of (coughs) having built community together and really taking seriously the fact that we're a family. And what I'm seeing is that as we're pulling on that history, we're not just, we're not just reaping the fruit, but we're continuing to cultivate. We're not allowing the distance to keep us apart. But last week we did our, our home group on Zoom for the first time, and it was so cool. We had like, what, eight people jumping in and participating, and there's just been a lot of um, just reaching out that I've personally experienced and, and heard from others in our staff where in the midst of distance, it's not actually, I mean, yes, it's separating us. I don't want to lessen that because there's a real reality of like it's painful to not always get to gather together. But in the midst of that, like what Kai was saying, utilizing the technology, not just for like live streaming worship sets and services, but really utilizing it to stay connected. So. Okay, so that great, great stuff. Uh, what has the second question, <coughs> I love how this is going to be on the screen. Uh, yeah, there it is. What has this revealed in your life that you want to improve upon? In other words, an area you didn't realize you were deficient in before the crisis hit. Yeah, I'll I'll comment on that one. Um, You know, we've been, I've been staying uh, or been at home a lot more than usual. Usually out working um, and leaving kind of early and getting back sometime between five and six and now between now staying at the house most every day. Um, I've, I've realized that I'm not as patient with my kids as uh, as I thought that I was, um, and y- y- one could argue, well, no, you're still maybe you're still patient. You just have more opportunities to be impatient. And no, that that's not it. I'm not as in, I'm not as patient um, as I want to be, and um, I think that it took probably took a couple of days to come to that realization because uh, it's sort of sobering and and a little embarrassing. Um, 
but also it was it was good in that it it gave me something to work on uh very very specifically that that i ha- and i'm not i haven't haven't mastered it yet um <laughs> Maybe I never will, but I uh, I want to I want to become more patient, and I'm having a lot more opportunity to try. You know, it's one of those dangerous prayers that you pray, yeah. Lord, help me be more patient. Well, in order to do that, you have to be put in situations where you have the opportunity to be impatient. Yeah. So um, I I just I want to encourage not just myself but all of us to 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 work on that, just because we're with our spouses, with a uh, our you know you got to be patient with Zoom. I mean, you got to be patient with all the technical stuff that happens that's wrong, you're gonna have a lot of opportunity to be impatient. And, and yeah. we're just, we have a real, real unique opportunity to grow in patience in a way that many of us have never, I've never had an opportunity to grow in patience like I have in the last three weeks. And you know, so. one thing I know about you personally, <clears throat> it's a very good quality is you're a, you're a doer. You like projects, right. you want things. And, and so um, there's a patience aspect to to being rather than doing right that's worked in all of us right as well absolutely yeah yeah Yeah, um one thing for me is that and i've kind of known this about myself um so it's kind of pathetic that i haven't actually improved upon it yet um (laughs) but the lord is merciful he gives us lots of second chances um (laughs) when i don't have consistency in my schedule like i'm not very good at managing my time I I want to believe that I am, and it's like I know in my head what I should be doing, but actually doing it, there's just a really big disconnect, and it's I don't like it at all. Um, and for most of my life, I've had the safety of having a s- pretty consistent schedule, whether it's a schedule that's given to me by an employer or by school or a schedule that my job is flexible, but I can create consistency within my own life. These past couple weeks, everything's just changed. Everything's been different. I wouldn't say that things have slowed down necessarily because I'm still I still have some essential work that I'm doing, but it's a little bit more scattered. It's a little bit less consistent. And so realizing that when I don't have that pattern in my life, that like one of the first things to go is my my quiet time with the Lord. And and so and then the enemy loves to come in and, and accuse and condemn. And and so then what happens is if I listen to that voice then my heart just kind of shuts down and I'll go through my whole day or even multiple days at a time kind of feeling numb, feeling distant, feeling like the Lord's upset with me. And it's honestly, it's, it's mostly subconscious. Like all of a sudden I'll just realize like, why am I so tired? Why am I just so like, I'm just done with life right now. And then I'll realize I haven't even picked up my Bible outside of a worship set in like two and a half days. Well, yeah, this is my life. This is the word. This is my bread. Like I'm starving myself and I'm not connecting myself to the source (coughs) of life. So of course I feel this way. Um, and so it, it's just showing me how, like, I don't want changes in, in my schedule to actually dictate the way that my character and my connected to the connectedness to the Lord looks. I want to be steadfast and faithful, just like we were singing about who the Lord is earlier this morning. Like, I want to be steadfast. I want to be faithful no matter what's going on around me that I don't get shaken by that, but that I can stay consistent. So, you know, so that brings up a really good, um, segue to question three because you're talking about time and the the third question is how have you been redeeming the time ephesians 5 says see that you walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil so um what what specifically are ways that you are all of you are redeeming the time yeah so (laughs) We, uh, Brooke and I, have been able to go really, really deep in the book of Zechariah uh, through an online Bible study that was opened up to us from the upper room in Dallas with Corey Russell being a teacher, and Emilio got to join in with me on that. And so um, we've just been going deep in this prophetic book, the second to last uh, book in the Old Testament, and we've just found so much heart connection, so much glory uh, we've been moved to tears. We've been like shaking <laughs> over the word of God. And it's just been really neat that maybe if it was just a normal schedule, we wouldn't have been able to set aside time like this and just really go deep uh, for an hour at a time in the evening uh, with with this Bible, uh, with this book of the Bible. Um, and then I, this is just really practical for us as as a church is I've, I've found myself redeeming the time 
uh, praying in the spirit a lot more is there's been uh, there's only certain battles <laughs> that the Lord calls us to that, that I believe that we can fight with our prayer language <laughs> and praying in the spirit. And the Lord has led me to do that. And it's not as practical as like, hey, I'm doing this certain thing, but praying in the spirit actually gives us, it energizes our spirit, it energizes us as people of God to actually um, stay focused, have the wisdom of God. And then when, when we put our hand to a task, there's a lot more grace for it. There's a lot more oil from the Holy Spirit. So I encourage you with those two things. That's what I've found a, a lot of grace for is praying in the spirit a lot more, praying in tongues and our heavenly language, our personal prayer language and going deep. In a, in a book of the Bible, like just going deep, mining out the glory, mining out the layers that you may maybe have never seen before. Um, and then th the last thing that I found is um, it's just really, it's personal too, even with some of my family members, is I have asked the Lord and received from the Lord a deeper love and appreciation and honor for the older generation. Because we know, we're, we've seen all the reports that this virus affects more of the, the older generation. And so I'm counting <laughs> the conversations, the times I have, you with my dad, with my grandma, uh, with people from our church that I've had conversations with. I'm counting those moments as truly precious. Not in any weird fear that they're going to get the virus, but just the Lord is using it to say, hey, listen to what they have to say. Listen to their stories. Like, glory in me and how I've made them and what they have to give for you. So I love the older generation, but I've, I've had a deeper love. And that's been something the Lord has, has allowed me to redeem the time is respect, honor, treasure the time you have with them. Um, because, yeah. Yeah. One of the things that's really helped me, uh, even, even as a precursor to redeeming the time, is, is being uh, intentional about being so thankful every day. Just, just for the day, I start every single day with Thanksgiving. I, I did that anyways, which is cool because now I can draw up on that oil. I was thankful when things are good. I, I mean, really, it was a practice, you know, just to, I, I write it out every single morning. Lord, thank you for this day. We have more than enough. Thank you for daily bread. And, and that's, you know, like when you go to the store and there's not bread on the shelf, like, you know, like that's like, oh, and then you, ac then you actually have to put your money where your mouth is. So um, being able to being able to uh, to start out every day with with Thanksgiving actually helps direct our, my time during the rest of the day to to make good use of, of every moment. I, I pray a lot in the spirit also more more than before, <laughs> and uh, and and it and it really does help coming coming into each day with a posture of Thanksgiving. Uh, actually helps block out a lot of the negativity and a lot of the noise and a lot of the fear and a lot of the question because you're you're thankful a thankful heart doesn't make a lot of room for doubt and worry um and so it's uh it, it's really helped me with with specifics i'll let you guys share more about specifics we've done some stuff too but but yeah but it's but really but really if we if we are if we are flustered confused and divided then we are then you're not going to be able to redeem any time because you're going to spend all your time right. inwardly focused yeah. on on trying to sort out all that. When when that stuff is sorted and done, then you can stay singularly focused on Jesus and what He's saying and doing, and then you'll be able to hear how He wants you to redeem the time. So it's a, yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you can drop um, the mic now, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think for me. Um, I actually, my schedule really hasn't changed that much, so I don't have a ton of extra time. Um, I still go into work, so I'm a property manager, so I'm an essential worker. But um, I will say that just this whole season change of quarantine, how a lot of people have had a lot of time, for me, it's really put a magnifying glass on how I spend my time normally. And to really be aware of the hour that we're in, and I've really asked the Lord, to I've seen that I have certain I felt like I had certain rights like a right to have a to come home and just hang out and not get on my face before the Lord or a right to um, not have to spend my whole day working discipling someone you know just rights I had I felt like I had rights yeah. um, to just the normal the normal things that we all think of Sabbath it's good for us those aren't bad but they can be hindrances. And so this, this time has really put a magnifying glass into that for me 
And I've realized that I just need to be aware of the time that we're living in. So I've really been asking the Lord, um, normally would be my chill free time, just to be in intercession with him and ask him to just show me regions to contend for, people to pray for. Um, just, And I just know it, forever, however long this, this lasts, that that's something that I really want to um, be w- uh, wise upon. And then also when things go back, well, not they're not going to go back to normal, but to really be mindful that they do not go back to normal the way I was using or spending my time before. Right. That we would take this time as a permanent redeeming. Right. Not just this season, a permanent redeeming. Yeah, that's good. I think for me, similar to Grace, my schedule hasn't, like, throughout the week really opened up a whole lot, but I feel it on the weekends a lot more because there's less invitation and less opportunity to go out and do things. And so um, so in that time and even in the evening times, like, there's there's probably one or two nights a week where I'm home a little bit more. Um, yeah, like, I'm, I'm feeling the wrestle to redeem the time. And so I think for me, I actually – I found a lot of courage this morning or this week, uh, just processing with the Lord, because I was kind of going. I feel like I'm not redeeming the time very well, like I, and I was just being really hard on myself. And by like Friday, I spent some time with the Lord, and and I was also talking to a mentor, and just kind of got to verbally process some stuff that I should have gotten out of my system way earlier. But praise God for mentors who listen to your stuff. Um, <laughs> And I just began to realize, like, wow, there's a, like, I'm being really hard on myself. I have had a lot going on this week, and it has been a lot more scattered, and I have not been lazy by any means. Maybe I haven't prioritized the things that I wanted to, like putting God first and everything, but doing the busy work for him rather than actually getting my heart before him. Um, but at the same time, I haven't failed by any means. Like, I've been very diligent in the stuff that I've been doing. I've been very committed. I've been pressing through when I'm anxious or when I'm frustrated or when I'm getting, like, five prayer requests from different people, like, to actually hold them before the Lord, even if it's just for that moment. And so one of the things that I've realized in in the past couple days have just been asking the Lord is that part of redeeming the time for me is actually being more aware of the inner dialogue and and really uh, taking control of the thoughts, taking every thought captive, that does not align with, with truth, does not align with the Lord. So, so where the accusations come in to go, okay, before I just jump on the bandwagon and agree with that, let me actually pause. I don't want to excuse behavior that could have been redeemed better. But at the same time, I don't want to disregard what I have done well. Um, I was actually talking to a friend who was kind of in a similar place earlier this week, and I was like, man, I created this to-do list, I have all this time, and I got caught up, like, doing one thing, and then I got distracted, and the whole day goes by, and I, like, halfway got through one thing on my to-do list. And I was just saying, you know, one of the things that I've done in the past, and I am trying to implement again, is not just making a to-do list, but making a got-done list. (laughs) Because a lot of times, as we're going through our day-to-day lives... You know, you create it to do, especially for parents. Nate, you probably feel this a lot. Kyle as well. Like, y- you have it on your radar to do something, and then all of a sudden life happens. And so you get to redirect in the moment, and through the conversation, like, just sp- pray in the Spirit, converse with the Holy Spirit, and really fight to tune your focus to the voice of the Lord rather than the voice of the accuser. And at the end of the day, when you're like, I am exhausted, and I feel like I got nothing done that was on this list, actually it's pause and reflect on what has gone well and how can I take joy and celebrate what the Lord gave me strength to do now because that's going to actually fuel me for tomorrow way more than the frustration and the fact that I have so much more that I still haven't gotten done. Somebody (coughs) said one time, time is the most precious commodity we have. (coughs) Um, So how we spend it, we've all got the same measure, 24 hours. And so um, just ask the Lord to help you uh, order your steps to redeem the time. Amen. Question four, as you have been, I love this question. I'm looking forward to this. As you've been reaching out to the church family, what are some good reports you can share? I'll say this just off off the top. If you've been getting calls, hopefully you have, or, or texts or things from the staff, we've been, we kind of set, set us the whole church database, and we've been uh, hopefully covering everybody and reaching out, so um, that's part of something that we've done to redeem the time, so, um, but what are some good reports? 
I'll share four really quickly. Um, Abigail Gordon, a 17-year-old member of Headwaters Youth. Her mom's name's Sherry. <laughs> River in the Hills Church family members. She started a nightly Zoom Bible study with all of her friends, her young friends on social media, every night at 9.30 p.m. And she just said there's people from not only this region, but all over the world joining in because she's got international friends being a tennis player. Youth, <laughs> a youth, a 17-year-old starting a Bible study every night at 9.30 using the technology. Second, we had a young adult's socially distanced group hike two weeks ago before the... <laughs> We tried before the, uh, the new measures were put in by Governor Abbott this week. And that was like one of the most full of life, full of joy hangouts that I can, I can remember. Jessica sitting in the back was there like it was just full of life. And like there were like 10 of us there and we were just rejoicing together, rejoicing that we could be together outside. And at the end of it, I felt led to invite us to get in a circle four to six feet apart, each of us in a circle and actually hear the Lord prophetically for the person to the right of us. And we went around systematically in the circle, and each person, each young adult, had like a dead-on prophetic picture or encouragement or word for the person to the, to the right of them. But with some of them, I'm sure they've, they've maybe done that one or two or three times. It, it, was, it was amazing. It was a, for me, it was a fulfillment of Acts 2.17, which is a promise that in the last days, your, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. It says again, they shall prophesy. So like everyone can hear the Lord and deliver it. That was, it was, it was mind blowing to me. Um, third real quick, uh, Patrick Hagan, uh, another church member has been giving, getting prophetic dreams. He had a vivid, wild dream of heaven a few weeks ago. And then just two nights ago, he had a dream of, of a warning from the Lord. Like basically, we're not ready. The things that we've been saying for 12 years, <laughs> we're not ready. We need to buy more oil. So God is releasing prophetic dreams. And last, uh, Diana Harland, a faithful church member here, reached out to a neighbor of hers who was in need, delivered food and supplies to her, got to interact with her, learn more about her family. And through this interaction, we have, we have taken her on as a, as a prayer assignment. Her family won't get the details, but basically their, their family, we're just praying for them. And Brooke and I sent in a text message prayer. We were in separate rooms. Brooke was at home. I was here at the church. We sent in separate text message prayers at the exact same time with the exact same phrase for this family. And the phrase was that God would release true light, true light to this family that Diana had reached out to with her love. And so if you want to agree with me for true light to be released over this family that Diana reached out to, they live in Lakeway, just agree with me. That clearly was on heaven's heart. And where two or three agree anything on earth concerning <laughs> anything, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven is what the Lord says. So true light released to that family. I could go on, but those are my four. I don't have any specific that I'm going to share. I'm going to kind of sum up um, just based upon a lot of the same things that I've been hearing, and it's, it's this. I have been so encouraged by the response of our church family that, like, yes, not to discount what you said, we aren't ready to a degree, but to the measure that we have been able to be ready up to this point, we've been doing a really good job. I have been hearing consistently, t like people being sober-minded about what's happening, not, not being ignorant, not being like, oh yeah, everything's fine, we're totally great, being very wise and very aware, but also so rooted, like, yes, there's challenges, yes, yes it's hard, but the Lord is our strength, the Lord is our deliverer, you know, I'm not going to give up, we're not getting discouraged, we're choosing to trust in the Lord, and I have just, I have seen this, and I'm like, man, I, I know that, that that's not the case for a lot of believers. A lot of believers are very shaken right now. Yeah. They're very, very shaken by the uncertainty, by the questions. But our church family, every single person who I have talked to has not really been tr shaken, yeah. which shows that, that you've been heeding the words <laughs> that Pastor Glenn has been preaching for a decade plus, um, that, that you're actually living this thing out. And so my encouragement is as we continue and it, this is one thing that the Lord has been speaking to me. Like, Rachel, you might have oil that's helping you right now. Yep. But if you use up your oil reserves and you don't continue to buy yep. oil right now, when yep. this whole thing is over, you're not going to you're going to be totally without. Yep. So make sure that you keep like in the areas where you're leaning into the reserves. Good. But keep getting more oil. Yep. Keep getting more oil. So keep doing what you've been doing. And, and thank you. For, for heeding the voice of the Lord, for heeding the word of the Lord, and for choosing yeah. joy and trust in the midst of this. Yeah. Different voices that um, this is a dry run, a trial run. Yep. 
uh, for us to get kinks out, you know, work out whatever, uh, troubleshoot basically to where we can be ready uh, and uh, leaner and meaner in the spirit for the next for the next things and be, become more of light in the dark world. And so um, I'm personally very encouraged. Do you have anything specific on no. no it's just all good. It's a good thing. I'm I'm yeah. I'm just encouraged that every time I talk to somebody it's good news. Yeah. Come on. So. Nate let me uh, ze- uh crash the young young married uh home group by Zoom on Friday night and uh, Young at heart married. Uh-huh, you yeah, are I married. I missed everybody. I just yeah. wanted to see faces and all that it was uh but man, uh, in particular, the, just the couples, there was just such joy in the home. You could just feel, I was like feeding off that joy. And uh-huh. so, you know, nobody was throwing plates at each other, and it was good. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, we're going to get to come to the last one. Uh, do you have a prophetic word or encouraging word or scripture for the church at this time? See, not everybody gets this, I have a word, but a scripture comes up. That's a prophetic word. It's, it's the Logos, the written, becoming the rhema. Okay, so um, is there a scripture or encouraging word? And we'll, we'll kind of be heading toward the end with this. Why is everybody looking at Grace? Um, and then the prophet spoke. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I just heard, it was so sweet from um, the Holy Spirit about, I think it was two days ago. I just heard so clearly. Um, I'm sharpening vision in the humble and the righteous responses. And then I, and then I was like, "Whoa!" And then I was like, good. "There's so many layers to that." But then I heard, um, "Walk in the light as you are children of the light," which I knew was a verse in Ephesians. And Ephesians five six through ten says, "Let no one deceive you with empty words." For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not become partners with them. For at one time you were darkness, but you, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. So two parts. I really feel like this is how the Lord sees us as Rith, how we're responding. We are in humble and righteous responses. And then also just as an encouragement of what it looks like when you, as a child of the light, walk in the light. And what that, and how I just love the part about, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. As you go out, as you call your friends and your family members, as you are out in the grocery stores, you have true light to give you have true fruit that will that could that will that can and will change people's lives because you carry who jesus is yeah i woke up this morning and i was actually still laying in bed and i knew this question was coming and i hadn't i hadn't heard anything uh yet and so i just asked the lord again i was like lord is there anything that you that you're saying that you wanted me to speak in on this and i just pictured in my mind uh psalm 103 in my bible because i knew what the page looked like and so I just opened it up, and, and there's a few verses that I felt the Lord highlighting, so I'm just going to read these. Um, so Psalm 103, starting in verse 13. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its place, it knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his covenant commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Mm. I just feel like the Lord wants to encourage us with that. There's there are promises. I would encourage you guys to uh, to really go visit this psalm and take a few minutes to meditate on it. Ask the Lord what he's speaking to you in it. I, I personally was really encouraged by verse 19, the Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Just a reminder that God is enthroned right now. He's still on his throne. He's still reigning. His kingdom is still over all. And I can take comfort in that. And so I believe that there are phrases within this section of scripture, Psalm 103, 13, verses 19, that are really going to speak um, to to some of you. Thank you. 
Okay, one more. Yeah, turn off the news and turn on your Bibles. Turn off Tiger King and turn on Lion King. Not the Disney movie, but rather watch the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the King of Kings, in the Word of God. Find the beauty of the true Lion King in your Bibles and weep over his beauty. That's so good, Kyle. I, you just, just to add to that, y- everyone watching, you know that you don't watch the news for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or an hour, and then shut it off and go like, hallelujah, I feel so good. <laughs> this, just, this just encouraged me and built me up, and uh, this was buying oil. Like, that just doesn't happen. So, yeah, don't, don't do it. That's good. Hey, we're going to... Um, we're going to just kind of transition right now into uh, a time where we're going to take prayer requests. Um, and so um, as, the, uh, as the worship team uh, moves to, to get set to do that, I just encourage you guys to, um, to comment and to uh, send in your uh, prayer requests and then any answers to prayers or words of knowledge that you might have. Uh, send them in and then we'll do a um, uh, kind of a group interaction here um, over uh, over the stream. If you're at home, you can sing the Jeopardy theme song right now for us. our eyes on you, Jesus. Oh, we fix our eyes on you, Jesus. The Lion King.
right, guys, as we get into this just interactive prayer here, I just want to um, just kind of, I'll be a little funny, but we want to cast out the spirit of observation, right? I just, I want to, uh, I, want, I want engagement uh, for our whole family. I just appreciate the time that each of you have taken to, some of you have fought technology this morning to, to tune in, and I just, I just so appreciate the, uh, the effort and the um, but we really want to engage with each other. I, I know that many of you have already, I mean, through the, through the service, already been praying along with some of the requests that have popped up, and I thank you for that. But um, I'm going to go through a few here, and if you have more, keep you on. I got the feed in front of me here. So, um, But we're going to pray over these, and we're going to agree together uh, for heaven's answer for each of these. Right, we pray for, um, for Danielle or for John Fox's mom, for Danielle's mother-in-law, I believe her name's Marilyn, who just lost a co-worker suddenly, um, Father, and that, that fear has moved in. God, we agree right now, Lord, for freedom from fear, God. Perfect love casts out all fear. Father, even when we, when we walk into H-E-B and it feels weird in there, that's fear. It's the spirit of fear, and we cast it out by bringing your love in there with us. We cast it out with a smile. We cast it out by picking up something that someone else dropped. We cast it out by by not looking like the rest of the world, Father. We're not shaken, God. Father, we pray right now over, over John and Danielle and their family, Father, that they would, they would have the grace put on them to be able to bring a new sense of peace, God, into Marilyn's life, Father. And we pray, God, for, uh, for peace and for, Lord, unusual joy in a time of grieving and a time of uncertainty, Father, that you will bring everything that's needed, that all answers for all questions are found in you. Father, I pray, God, for, for Michael, who just interviewed for a job, Lord, we pray your great grace over that. Uh, Father, it's so funny that, it, that there's job interviews going on right now in a time where so many people are losing their jobs. And so, Father, I, I speak against any fear that would creep into Michael over, well, what if they, what if they, no, Lord, we trust you. We trust you that you, that the heart of the king is in your hand, Father. And God, that, that you would make a way where there doesn't seem to be a worldly way, God. That we, we just bless you, Michael, in, in the time of waiting for, for the answer for this job in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray, God, right now for Kathy's daughter. And, and her family, God. We speak against fear, God, but even before we go there, God, we pray for salvation for each one, for, their, for her daughter, for her son-in-law, and for her grandkids, God. We pray, God, that they would come to a saving knowledge, God, that, that the blood of Jesus was poured out for them, and that they would say yes to that. Father, that they would say yes this morning. I thank you for Kathy's fervent prayers through the years for her family, God. Her fervent prayers for her granddaughter, the way that she she so she she just taps into the spirit of Jehovah sneaky God with the way that she has conversations, Lord, the way that she even even gives them gifts, God. It's it's thought out, it's prophetic, it's it's purposeful. And Father, we ask that those purposes, God, would come to fruition today, God. We ask for salvation for them in Jesus' name. And we speak against fear. We speak healing over their asthma in the name of Jesus. God, that there would be there'd be no issues that are raised in health right now for Kathy's daughter's family. And Father, we pray, God, for Fred Thomas. We pray for healing, God, right now for his mother who's struggling with cancer, God. And it's, it's, a, it's a grim situation, God. We speak peace over Fred, God, over his mom's husband. God, we speak against depression, Lord. We speak against anxiety, God, and we agree with with Rick and Janice Anderson for peace in this situation, God, for peace in this storm. Father, that your ways, that your ways would be made uh, made evident in the, in the Thomas house, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, church family, for agreeing with these, agreeing with these. Lord, thank you for the praise request, God, from Ben. Lord, he got he told he told that one day, hey, you got to find a new place to live, and uh, I even talked to him on that day, and and I think he would he would just say that you know it was that was kind of a rough day, and uh, you you can imagine, and and it's and it's actually it's actually turned out to be he's going to be in a better situation than he ever could have hoped for. Lord Ben, that's Jesus, that's Jesus. 
exceedingly and exceedingly and greatly above what you can ask or even imagine. You you could imagine pretty big, but you didn't imagine big at this point. He showed up and just and just wowed you. And so so thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the solution to that problem, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we pray for grace and strength. We agree with Derek and Elizabeth, God. Father, that they're moving, moving to Florida in the midst of all this. God, it's just a couple weeks left. God, we just, we're going to miss them, so we pray for ourselves. Lord, we pray for ourselves that, that, that when the acres leave, it leaves a big hole, Lord. And Father, we just ask, God, for the logistics, God, in this time of, of needing to stay away from people in so many places being closed, but they still need to follow your call. They still need to follow your call as they go where Derek can join the Jesus School in Orlando. God, we pray for great grace for them during this time. We thank you for the acres. We bless them richly in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We pray for Heather and Sebastian, God, who have contracted this virus. Lord, we agree with Ariana for healing for them in the name of Jesus right now. Virus, die in the name of Jesus in the bodies of Heather and Sebastian. Thank you, Jesus, that your blood will cover COVID-19 in them. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we lift up Craig Parker this morning, and we agree with Margaret and all of us as a church family that his back pain will leave in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for the heritage that they carry, God, the rich history with you. Even, Father, we mentioned earlier today that the first R that Glenn said is remember remember or recall uh, what what the Lord has done. And and as I think just from the conversations I've had with Craig and Maggie through the years, they have a rich history to draw from. Look where, look where God showed up. Look what God did for us here. Look at whether it's in business, in life, in ministry. And so, God, as they call on that rich history of, Lord, look who you've been in our life, God, that you'd show up again for them right now in the name of Jesus. Chronic back pain and Craig, leave in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We pray, Lord, for Dave and Virginia Cheney. Thank you, God, for these these generals, God, in the faith. They've been there and done that. My goodness, and I thank you, Lord, for keeping them, Lord, uh, not just safe, but right close to you, right close to your side. We speak a mighty hedge of protection around both of them right now in this time. Father, I pray that they would be greatly and supernaturally filled with your spirit, even right now where they sit in their living room, God, that you would touch them, Lord, that your Chabad would would truly walk into the room and remain with them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We agree, Lord, with hope. We agree, Lord, with the good news. I thank you, God, that where the enemy comes in to steal, kill, and destroy, that you're here to give life and give it abundantly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, last week we prayed for Karen McCutcheon's mom. She's 95. Uh, Lord, that that she had been taken to the hospital. It was kind of a sketchy situation. She's out of the hospital and back home, back into memory care where she lives. So we thank you, Lord. That's what we prayed for last week, that she'd be able to get out of there quick. Thank you, Lord. Yes, we agree, Gina, that the church will prosper in the name of Jesus. It's on his heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Diana, I don't want the acres to leave either, but... I'm not going to fight God on this one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray for Manny Lemire, Father. Give him a spirit of humility, God. Father, I pray for Terry and Michelle. You give them wisdom and divine revelation on how to walk out leadership over this situation, God. Father, I thank you, God, that their hearts are turned towards you. I thank you, Lord, that they love their kids immensely. So, Father, just as you love them, there you, you, Terry and Michelle, you are God's kids. Father, I thank you, God, that you're going to give them that perspective, how you feel about them, and so they can take that, and that's how they can turn towards Manny in this time, Lord. I pray, God, for a submissive spirit in Manny and for a, for a humble spirit, the same, same humility that was in Jesus when having fully realized who he was, he took up a towel and started washing his disciples' feet. Father, I just speak that spirit of humility in the, in the Lemaire household today, and I thank you, God, for this family who fears you and loves you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just, just I, if you're following this feed here, it says Michelle Lemire actually tested positive for the coronavirus and went in for a blood transfusion and got retested. And they said, well, we don't know, but it's not here anymore. 
thank you, Jesus. They said they prayed as a family around her before they went in. So thank you, Jesus. We just, that exact same, what were their names? Heather and Sebastian. We just pray that same, that, that, that Terry and Michelle, would you get, would you stop what you're doing right now? And would you pray for Heather and Sebastian? Just the same way you carry an authority to impart that same thing. You, you've seen that healing personally. If you would just stop what you're doing and, and pray right now, Heather and Sebastian would experience that same miracle that Michelle experienced. We agree with that in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just pray over Josh, God. Lord, as he's as he's selling, or there's trans, there's business transactions going on right now. Lord, uh, Father, he's, the, the, he's starting a business and leaving a salary in this time of uncertainty. Lord, that you'd give him, Father, peace where you're saying to move, but also, Lord, that you'd show him which doors are open and which doors are closed. God, that he wouldn't keep throwing his shoulder into a closed door and that you would lubricate the hinges of the open ones so that they, they swing wide open and it's obvious. God, I'm asking for just obvious answers, Lord, for Josh right now in this, in this time of, of questioning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We'll just give about one more minute. Father, we're excited. We're excited and greatly anticipating what you are doing. Father, Romans 8.28 has never been more real than it is right now. The all things part of that verse, Father. We love you. We are called according to your purposes, and you're taking all things and working them for good. Thank you, Lord. Nothing's outside of your reach. Thank you, Lord, for revival. Thank you, Lord. Even as Grace said, Lord, that we, <laughs> we're not looking to get back to normal. We're not looking to get back to the way things are. We're excited about the, the Isaiah 43 new thing. Lord, you're always doing a new thing, so we should never want to get back to the way you used to do things. Lord, don't even let us get caught asking for an, act, an Acts 2 outpouring because that was Acts 2's new wine. That was 2,000 years ago's new wine. I want, I want today's new wine, Lord. I thank you, God, that, that you have a new thing in store for your church, that you have a new thing in store for your bride and for your kids, God. And I pray for grace and patience right now to wait it out, but also, Lord, to act, Lord, in the meantime, to act with, with how we spend our time, with how we redeem the time we've been given, Lord, that we would continue to buy oil so that even, even as we draw on our reserves that we're using right now, that we wouldn't end up a month or two from now empty again, Lord, that as we, as we pour out, that you continue to fill us back up, God. Fill us to overflowing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we agree, God, for total eradication of this virus. We agree for every single one of your purposes to be accomplished in and through this time. Father, thank you, Lord, for, the, for our church family. God, thank you for River in the Hills right now. God, just bless and extend uh, just great, great prosperity, abundance, God, for peace, God, for great sleep, for patience, God, with, with spouses, with kids, with job situations, with technology. Father, Lord, we pray for a for an amazing afternoon of rest today. It's your day. God, I just speak rest, rest, rest over each one so that we can hit this week hard, God, and, and, and make great impact, Lord, in the kingdom. Lord, and I just thank you, God, for, for even the ability to be able to interact with each other, even if it's, it's not face-to-face, -face, God. It's what, we, it's what we can do under the conditions we're in, God, and we will, we will hug and we will shake hands and we will do all those things again soon. Uh, but, Father, thank you, God, for being our supply and being the one who never needs to be six feet away and being the one who hears us when we pray, God. We believe you, we trust you, and we're thankful for you. Thankful for you, church family. I'm just going to turn it over to Kyle real quick. I love you guys, and we'll see you soon. Just wanted to thank y'all for tuning in this morning and remind y'all of uh, three quick announcements before we sign off. Uh, so we do have our prayer room sets, like we mentioned. We'll have 11 live worship and prayer sets streaming from our Facebook live page. It's the Lake Travis Prayer Room Facebook page if you want to go and check out the schedule and see which hours that you can make and tune in and join your song and join your prayer with us. Also a reminder that we'll have Zoom, uh, Bible study, Zoom, home groups, 
uh, this week, possibly Google Hangouts as well. Just look for correspondence, look for information from each of those leaders. I know the Young Adults and Grace's Home, home Group is going to meet tomorrow night at 730. And so, and then the last one, big one, we'll see you next Sunday in your cars for our River in the Hills Easter drive-in service. So we encourage you guys to get here at 10 or 10.15 so you can find a parking spot. We'll be in the back alley behind the church uh, for Easter drive-in service. This is amazing. Can't wait to join you guys. We'll see you in the back alley next week. God bless y'all. Have a great week.